Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 4, Lesson 3 on Ordering Rational Numbers. All right. Now that's probably a new term, rational numbers, right? So right away what we want to do is we want to discuss what rational numbers are in the first place before we start to order them. Now a side note, we can just talk about ordering because just a few lessons ago we ordered positive numbers and all ordering means is really taking two numbers and determining which one's greater and which one's less. That's, that's all ordering is. Let's though talk a little bit about what rational numbers are. All right. So positive or negative numbers that can be represented as fractions whose decimals terminate or repeat are known as rational numbers. So basically, every type of number you've seen so far, when you put them all together, those are known as the rational numbers, okay? Primarily because they are ratios. And we're gonna be working with ratios in coming, coming units, but rational numbers are all the numbers you've worked with so far. And today what we wanna do is see how we can compare them. See how we can say this number is greater than this one, this number is less than this one, etc. But let's start by reviewing a little bit about plotting negative and positive numbers on a number line. Exercise number one. Plot each of the following rational numbers in their approximate location on the number line below. Label each with its letter. All right, and I got, I'm like all over the place on this. I've got decimals, I've got fractions, I've got decimals that have repeating digits, all that stuff. So what I'd like you to do, right, since we did this a ton in the last lesson, is I'd like you to pause the video and try to get each one of these numbers in as close of a location as you possibly can. Some of them you're not gonna be able to get perfect and that's completely okay. Other ones you'll be able to nail down pretty darn accurately. Pause the video now and take a little bit of time. Actually, come to think of it, almost none of these are gonna be overly easy to place. Even the first one, 6.7, right? Because I know that six is here, I know seven is there, so 6.7's gotta be somewhere in between them, and it's gotta be closer to seven than it is to six. So here we go. 6.7, I'm gonna put right about there. Honestly, if you have it anywhere between six and seven, you're probably good to go. Negative 2.3, right? Here's negative one, here's negative two, here's negative three. Negative 2.3 is gonna be between negative two and negative three, and it's gonna be slightly closer to negative two. Ooh, so B, maybe somewhere right around there. All right, 8.25, also known as eight and one quarter, same thing, right? Here we've got seven, eight, nine. Here would be eight and a half, and eight and one quarter would be right about there. All right, so we're right about here with letter C. Ah, negative 7.6 repeated. Now remember, all that really means, right, is negative 7.666, et cetera. Whatever, right, all we know is that here's negative seven, here's negative eight, negative 7.66666 should be somewhere right about in there. So let's do it right about here. There's letter D. All right, here is our only straight up real fraction in the problem. I mean, we got a little bit of fraction going on here, but E of one sixth, right? One sixth, right? It's just barely greater than zero. So E is gonna be around there. And finally, negative four and two thirds. Here we go, here's negative four, here's negative five, negative four and two thirds will be right about there. So there's letter F. Now, before we move on in this lesson, it is absolutely critical that you can do this. Primarily because we wanna be able to think about number lines when we compare numbers in terms of greater than or less than. So let's review a little bit of that in the next problem. Here we go. A review of an important geometric fact when comparing two numbers. Exercise number two. An unmarked number line is shown below with three points labeled. Fill in each circle with a greater than sign, a less than sign to make the statement true. Explain why you made your choice. Now, this is kind of fascinating. You might say this is completely unfair. There's no numbers on here. How in the world am I gonna compare number A to B to C if I don't even know what they are. 
But we looked at some geometric facts last time and in the homework you reviewed them in terms of greater than, less than, and where numbers are on a number line. So, what I'd like you to do is try to fill in greater than or less than in these two and then give me an explanation for why. Pause the video now and go ahead. All right, well it doesn't really matter on this number line sort of how we label it. The plain fact is A must be greater than C. And why must A be greater than C? Well, for a very simple reason, let me just move this up a little bit. Because A lies to the right of C. Any number on a number line that lies to the right of another one is greater than it. Likewise, letter B, when we're comparing C and B, right, C must be less than B. And again, why? And that's because C lies to the left of B. Okay, simple as that. Now, exercise number three. Fill in the following about two numbers plotted on a horizontal number line. Letter A, a number that lies to the right of a number, another number is blank than it. Letter B, a, no, a number that lies to the left of another number is blank than it. All right, what I'd like you to do is fill in those two blanks. Pause the video now and go ahead and do that rather quickly. All right, well this was just what we were talking about. A number that lies to the right of another number is greater than it. And a number that lies left of another number is the less than it. Now, no matter whatever happens with numbers and plotting them and things like that, this is what you can always go back to. If you're ever wondering, oh, is that number greater than or less than that number? The question is, if you plotted the two on a standard horizontal number line, which one would lie right or left of the other one? It's that simple. Now, let's start bringing negative numbers into the mix. Here we go. Comparing positives and negatives. Exercise number four. Plot the three numbers below on the number line and then fill in the circles with either a greater than or a less than symbol. If you get confused, look back at exercise number three. All right, I'd like you to try this one completely on your own. Obviously, you can plot those three numbers. That shouldn't be an issue, okay? Then the question will be, when you fill in these three circles with a greater than or a less than symbol, which one will go in and why? Pause the video now and take a shot at this. All right, let's do it. First, let's plot the numbers. I have A at negative two. That's gonna be pretty simple, right? I'm gonna have B at seven, also pretty easy, and I'm gonna have C at negative nine, also pretty easy. Okay, now what I wanna do is I wanna compare these numbers. All right, so negative two versus seven. Well, negative two is sitting right there and seven is sitting right there, all right? I don't even need to look at the numbers down here. I don't even need to look at those because the plain fact is seven is to the right of negative two and therefore negative two must be less than seven. And maybe for my y, I'm gonna say negative two lies to the left of seven. Now, maybe the most confusing one of all, letter B, comparing negative two to negative nine. Well, there's negative two and there's negative nine. Negative two lies to the right of negative nine, and therefore negative two is greater than negative nine. Negative two lies to the right of negative nine. And that is amazingly counterintuitive. 
We all know that 2 is, is less than 9. 2 is less than 9. But negative 2 is greater than negative 9. And it's greater than negative 9, again, for that plain, simple geometric fact, it lies to the right of it. There's negative 2, there's negative 9, negative 2 is 7 units greater than negative 9. That's what it is. Now finally, also a bit confusing, comparing 7 to negative 9. Well, there's 7, there's negative 9, 7 clearly lies to the right of negative 9, and therefore 7 is greater than negative 9. 7 lies to the right of negative 9. Awesome! It's that simple, right? So now we should be able to compare negatives to negatives, negatives to positives, right? We certainly can already compare positives to positives. One thing that you might realize right away, think about this for a moment, is that any positive number is going to be greater than any negative number. The number 1 is greater than the, no than the number negative 1 million, right? 1 would lie here, negative 1 million would lie way over there, way over there, that's better, right? And therefore 1 would be greater than negative 1 million. Right? Any positive is greater than any negative. In fact, 0 is greater than any negative number because 0 lies there and all the negatives lie over here. All right? The thing that I think is trickiest is comparing two negative numbers, right? And then the smaller negative number always ends up being greater than the larger negative number. Got to put smaller and larger in quotes, right? Again, it's all about where they are on the number line. Let's take a look at a practical example, right? Exercise number four. On a very cold winter day, the high temperature in Minneapolis, Minnesota was only negative 12 degrees Fahrenheit. In Green Bay, Wisconsin, it was negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit as a high. Plot both temperatures on the number line shown, label the, Mini the Minneapolis' temperature M and Green Bay's temperature G. Then we're going to figure out which town had the greater high temperature, and we're going to write an inequality statement to justify our answer. All right, so first things first should be easy enough, right? Plot negative 12, label it M, plot negative 4, label it G, all right? Then, if you can, answer these two questions as well. Pause the video and go ahead and do this. All right, well, here we go. Minneapolis, Minnesota was down there at negative 12 degrees Fahrenheit. That's all the way down here, right? Then we have Green Bay, Wisconsin at negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit. So right there, both extremely cold temperatures. All right. And what should be pretty obvious, right, is that Green Bay has the greater high temperature than Minneapolis. So Green Bay is the correct answer. Now, the inequality that we should write down is very simple. Negative 4 is greater than negative 12. Now you might say, well, wait a second, this isn't a horizontal number line, right? It's a vertical number line. And when you look at a vertical number line, it might even be more obvious, right? Which is that any, any number that is below another number is less than it. Any number that is above another number is greater than it. So the plain fact is Green Bay definitely has a higher temperature or a greater temperature than Minneapolis. All right, let's now do some flat out comparisons. All right, let's get some practice with this greater than or less than thing. This can be a little challenging. Now, I know on your sheet you don't have a number line just sitting there. You may want to kind of sketch one or something just to help you sort of think about this, okay? Once you get the hang of it, it actually turns out to be quite easy, all right? But let's take a look at exercise number six. Place a greater than or less than symbol in each circle below to make the statement true. All right, let's take a look. All right, first statement, negative 10 compared to negative 3. Well, here's negative 10 and here's negative 3, right? Negative 10 lies to the left of negative 3 on the number line, so negative 10 is less than negative 3. Literally, if I look at this temperature, or not temperature, <laughs> I'm still caught up in the last problem. You know, if we look at these two numbers, this number must be greater than this number because it lies to the right of it. All right, 
Let me just do a little bit of erasing there. All right. How about zero versus negative five? Well, here's zero. Here's negative five. Zero lies to the right of negative five, so zero must be greater than it. All right. And it really boils down to just doing things like that. Now, some of these can maybe be a little bit more challenging because they've got some fractions, some decimals, things like that. But I'd like you to pause the video now and take a shot at this. See how much you've understood so far. All right, well, here we go. We've, we're comparing now six and negative nine. Six is over here. Negative nine is all the way back here. Since six is to the right of negative nine, six must be greater than negative nine. Now, negative five and positive five, same thing, right? Here we've got positive five, here we've got negative five. Negative five lies to the left of positive five, so negative five is less than positive five. And again, if you want a very simple rule, it's this easy. Every negative number is less than every positive number. End of story. All negatives are less than all positives. So when we have something like zero compared to negative 100, here's zero and negative 100 way out here, right? Zero will definitely be to the right of negative 100. So zero is greater than negative 100. And now we start to get into some decimal stuff. Let me bring this up a little bit so we can see that other number line, right? Negative 11.5 versus negative 3.2. Again, not that hard as long as we can picture where these numbers are, right? Negative 3.2 would be maybe right around here. And negative 11.5 would be maybe right around there. Again, simple enough. A negative 11.5 is to the left of negative 3.2 and therefore is less than it. All right. Negative five and two thirds versus negative one and one half. I don't need to locate these exactly. Negative five and two thirds is right about there. Negative one and a half is right about there. Negative one and a half is to the right of negative five and two thirds or vice versa. Negative five and two thirds is to the left of negative one and a half. And so it's less than it. Now finally, some very small decimals. One one hundredth versus negative one tenth. Well, one one hundredth would be really close in here, right? And negative one tenth would be right about there, right? And therefore, one one hundredth is greater than negative one tenth. And really, that final one falls into that category of any positive is greater than any negative. All right, let's wrap this up. Now, primarily what we did today was we tried to order negative and positive numbers, which when put together are called the rational numbers. It's not entirely true. I'm kind of leaving some stuff out. But in terms of the numbers you know, that's good enough. We ordered the numbers using a very simple principle. When two numbers are plotted on a number line, the one that's to the right of the other one is greater than it. Doesn't matter whether they're po both positive, both negative, or one's positive and one's negative. It just doesn't matter. You can always judge greater than or less than based on relative positions on a number line. All right, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.